Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Zadon. I can't believe I forgot to use that intro beforehand, although... I'm starting to wonder if that was such a bad thing. Anyway. The next round has already started. We have Captain Klutz vs. Veltas, Gaiup and Ikens, Dying for Magman, and Google Frog vs. Lamadeus. And I... I kind of want to see how Captain Klutz plays. But I'm also curious what Magman's been up to. Anyway, we're going to be on Lonely Oasis. That is one of Sprung's maps. I like Sprung's island maps that are so well known and somewhat contentious. I like them. Anyway, also in terms of standings, Google Frog with a perfect record so far. Dying Friend, Guy up and Lamadeus lost their previous round, so they are or no, Lamadeus lost their last they won their last round, but they still lost a previous round. So Google Frog currently leading quite heavily. And it looks like Captain Klutz is not going to be in this for much longer. So I'm going to go and just watch them. So that's who I want to watch. Anyway, that is... It's going to be interesting. I don't recall seeing Captain Klutz before. They feel like someone who I I should know, but not someone I do know. I'm not really sure to say to that, but yeah, that's the thing. I've never really heard of this player, and my guess is they are a team player or teams player, but I have no idea. Anyway, we are we're in this and we have Lonely Oasis. I love that map. It's such a pretty map. I'm curious what factors we're gonna see. Probably we're gonna see Captain Klutz go for gunship, just because the position they have in the tournament and the, in this map, and considering that Field is such a strong player, I think Captain Clutch is going to try to go for something very early to just rush down. That is such a common thing to do that I expect we are seeing... No, we are not going to see that. In fact, we're going to see Amphib, I believe. Yeah, Amphib coming out from Captain Clutz. Filthus going for Cloakybot Factory. Well, those are factories you haven't seen thus far. I mean, we saw Shields and Hovercraft, but these are much more typical factory. Oh, okay, Amphib is not that typical. On this map, it has some advantages. You can put archers in the little kidney pods here, but they're not all that useful, relatively speaking. The only oasis of all of these Sprung Island maps is the least amphib-friendly. Like, at Ansonia, especially earlier versions, had the entire outside section you can go through and the fjords you can go down, and... Oh, what was the other one? La Isla, La Isla Bonita has the entire outside section, all the outside shallows, metal extractors that Amphib bots can completely wreck if they get close to. But not here. Lonely Oasis doesn't really have any access points into the water, and the only ones it does have don't lead you anywhere tactically advantageous. I've seen ships used fairly well in this map as artillery pieces around the side, around the back, but not Amphib Factory. So this is entirely going to be their usefulness on land, and Amphib versus Cloakie is a matchup which increasingly has gone over to the Cloakie side. Used to be Amphib versus Cloakie was an Amphib win, or at least like 7-3 for Amphib, but ever since people realized you can just use warriors and rogues, or sorry, warriors and rockos and just wreck all the ducks, it's been fine. Duck versus Glaive is massively, advan is massively advantageous for ducks, but Cloakie versus Amphib isn't just Duck versus Glaive. So, Captain Klutz is going to be in a tricky position right now. Their economy right off the bat is strong. I like it. They're getting early expansions going. They have early workers as well. I th yeah, they do. They have early work going on the south side here, or the south of their base, right here, eastern side, really. So they're not going to have a hard time get keeping themselves in the game for the first few minutes. They are going to have to get through some stuff here, and it looks like these ducks should be able to take care of this Lotus without too many... Oh, never mind. Yes, there's some... There are going to be too many issues. Failed House's commander right here, keeping those ducks from dealing any meaningful damage. 
they had attacked a little sooner, they probably would have had a chance, but it was a bit too late. The Lotus was up, there was no way of breaking it. I think four or five ducks is what you need for Commander. I'm not entirely sure what the numbers are there. With most other factories, it's... I kind of know what the numbers are to kill a Commander of the Raiders. Not so sure when it comes to ducks. And at this point, Thoss with a strong military advantage. I realize it's only two minutes in the game and just two rogues... Or sorry, two Rockos. I've seen too many Shieldblood Factories games in the last while, actually. Shieldblood's been very popular recently. Two Rockos and a Warrior. Those constitute a strong military advantage. Unless you see boys built up. Although, scallops might work. I don't see that working. Boys are going to be the option to go for. Captain Kless has got that right. Scallops are an interesting experiment, but they're not going to get close enough to the Rockos to deal any meaningful damage. So, no. Sorry. Only one unit of them, though, so should be fine. Why Captain Klutz isn't repeat building, boys, I will never know, though, because repeat build is a super useful tool, and if Captain Klutz was using it, they wouldn't be very nearly excessing metal. Ah, there we go. Finally, I finally get this stuff, stuff going. I don't see any excess metal yet. Actually, at this point, Captain Klutz has used a bit more metal than... than Fieldthos. Unit value is about the same, though, so Captain Klutz hasn't managed to make that work out in a massive overwhelming military advantage, but they have still managed to keep parity. If only barely, and now Fieldhouse does have the advantage. Little hard to say how this is going to go. Anyway, Fieldhouse, with the... With the expansion to the southeast with a commander up front, compared to Captain Clutch just going on the plateau with just a worker... Sending in a conch there just to take that and not really at much risk. Captain Kless's commander, on the other hand, going over to the northern side of the map. And Fieldhouse did not take advantage of their military advantage, what they had at the time when they had it. Now, boys and scallops, I, like I said, don't understand the logic of the scallops, but I do understand the logic of the boys. Those are a great option against the Kalikabot factory. The scallops, if there are glaives, might work, but ducks work just fine, so I don't really know. Anyway, Scallop coming in here does have the advantage of a cliff. Their targets have nowhere to run. Like, the main advantage that Rockos have is they can run. But as soon as you put them against a cliff, they're dead. So right now, Captain Klutz might actually be able to take this out. I mean, certainly the Warrior is just about dead. The boy, as long as he hits that and does manage to do so, there's the Warrior down. The Rockos are going to have a similarly difficult time getting out of here. It's just going to be Kite City. The boys should be able to take care of them, no problem. Feel with us, at the same time, they are managing to build up what they can, but they aren't managing to get a whole lot going. They will, though, soon. Once the Caretakers are done, Feel with us will take advantage of their economy advantage. And this should turn around quickly. Anyway, Captain Klutz just about ready to get the north side of the map. A little slower than they need to. Field Toss is really being on the ball here, and also getting size on top of that. They're, they're going to make life remarkably difficult for Captain Klutz in a very short... Actually, never mind. No, no, those Lotuses are going to make that unwise. I don't think Field Toss is going to attack. If Field Toss does attack, they're going to regret it, but I don't think they're going to attack just because they know they're going to regret it. Field Toss is strong enough of a player that I... I would be surprised. No, never mind. They're... Oh, full attack with the commander. But the commander is upgraded. Rocket launchers and extra armor. So they're they're doing fine. There's not a whole lot of resistance here. The plateau will fall quickly enough. And Captain Klutz, how much are they accessing at this point? Now, 300 metal so far. But that is already the advantage difference between Field Toss and Captain Klutz. So the military advantage, or at least the metal advantage of attrition, has essentially been doubled over by the excess. Captain Klutz with... No caretakers. They do have a conch, they do have grizzlies, but they don't have any caretakers. A couple conches coming in here to help out and use all that excess. And Captain Klutz does have the energy needed to make that work. So, econ economically speaking, they're fine. They just need to have the production there. And that will happen soon enough. Still a bit of a shame for them they lost that plateau. That is six metal per second they would rather have had. Getting a bit of a revenge on Fieldthos, but not quite enough to make that stand out too much. Well, Fieldhouse, on the other hand, has just secured their economic advantage strongly. I'm not really sure what to make of that. Still, it's... 
it is worth noting that Philotas has a much stronger military presence on that plateau than Captain Klutz did on the Eastern Plateau. Right, the Western Plateau could stay Philotas's, although admittedly the forces available are actually making this difficult. The Broncos are a good choice, and the, bo the boys also a strong choice, but it's just working out in favor. Here I'm saying that the Clokibot matchup for Amphib is actually in Clokibot's favor, and I'd still say it is, but the thing is, this is where Glaives would actually shine. We aren't seeing them because Fieldhouse is probably thinking, oh, well, the Glaives don't work against Amphib, but against Boys, seems like that's actually going to be relevant. The Rockos aren't doing a fine enough job for their numbers, and Boys are way more expensive than Rockos. I mean, Boys are about three times the cost of Rockos. So let's not get ahead of ourselves here. By cost, there's still a massive advantage for Cloakie by Factory. Even then, though, this boy is just making everything tricky, and that's forcing, like, that's a thousand units, or a thousand metal worth of Rockos to try to deal with 300 metal worth of boy. They're going to win, eventually, but in the meantime, we just have the Grizzly here doing whatever it can. Not a whole lot of resistance against it, either. I mean, it looks like the Scythe was next to it, but it's really hard to tell now, because the... Well, the wreckage of here, anywhere, is gone. No, no Scythe is forthcoming. So yeah, there's a couple snipers. That's about all there is. And the boy, while dead, did force Philtas' forces way out of position. I mean, this southern side of the map, the Grizzly, with some scallop support... Why scallop support? Duck support would make a lot more sense, but whatever. The Grizzly should be able to walk through here and still deal quite a bit of damage. I mean, the Spectre will be a problem, but mostly against the boys. Still, Captain Klutz, I don't know, their their economy is starting to fall apart. They, at this point, their excess wasn't so bad, but their income is way behind. Their metal usage is gradually falling behind, and same with unit value. It's just... They are just having a hard, harder and harder time maintaining the presence they had five minutes ago. Like, failed Tussis harassments and consolidation of the harassed points, or of the raided points... It's pretty much forcing Captain Klutz to go for an all-or-nothing attack with the Grizzlies and boys here. Or Grizz Grizzly Boy Duck Scallop. And with the forces here, with the defenses here, I don't see that working other than a center attack through the kidney beans. If they go through here, an attack from behind, forcing Fieldhouse to retreat, that could do the trick. That could also lead to a counterattack from Fieldhouse, which Fieldhouse would very handily win. But that's something that remains to be seen. I mean, Captain Klutz has very few options, especially as they are kind of starting to excess. They do have storage up, just barely. I don't know why they're accessing either. Oh, wait, I know why they're accessing, because they don't use repeat build. They seem to think this is StarCraft for some reason. At any rate, Captain Klutz with the airplane factory. Bit of an unusual switch. Actually, Philthus going for that as well. Going for a lot of Ravens on top of that. They, What are they trying to kill? This is more Ravens than you need to kill a commander. I mean, they have the Grizzly as a target. That's probably what they're going to go for. For which you do need about 12. So, we have so far... 8. And, as opposed to Captain Klutz, who only has 4, but Captain Klutz really only needs 4. If they can get rid of the commander, that's going to be enough. And Fieldhouse's commander... Sorry, not 4. They're going to need 6. Still, if Captain Klutz has six, they can get rid of Fieldhouse's commander, and that'll pretty well stop this big expansion over to the eastern side of the map. And that'll massively reduce Fieldhouse's presence there. The western side of the map still is a strong presence, and that's actually a great staging point to get rid of the air factory. But without the commander, the eastern side's probably going to fall. I mean, that's what that's what Captain Klutz is set up to deal with. On the other hand, Philthos is, like, two bombers away. No, they have enough. They have enough to kill the Grizzly. Not even a question of how many bombers away. They're, this is over. And, oh, I see. Never mind. Not going for the commander. Going for the Stingers instead. Which I don't agree with. Like, honestly, this setup right here is where I'd go for Thunderbirds. But we aren't seeing that. We are seeing... A Phoenix coming to try to deal with some of these Rockos, but Phoenixes have not been strong for a long time. Even against Rockos, which they're partly meant to counter, they haven't really been that relevant. 
And now, with Hawks coming in, that's going to make it even harder. There's really no point in going for those Ravens. Like, Captain Clutch does not have air control. In the slightest. And also managing to get rid of all these wind generators, break up a fair bit of the overdrive that's being used here. Not a huge amount, but I don't know. Anyway, Captain Clutch going for it. Going for the attack, not worried about the stinger. He's gonna lose a couple ducks. That's actually value. Like that of all the options they could lose. That was probably the least that was probably the least painful. I mean, the Grizzly's still in a strong position. There's the Ravens. That's what I, That's what we're going to see. The Ravens coming in here. No anti-air so support coming in. So this Grizzly is dead. Bit of a shame, that, but I think that's going to be GG. I don't see Captain Clutz maintaining much presence in this game. They might decide to go for it. They might just figure... No, never mind. That's the towel. Not even a GG. A full-on I concede. Yeah, I've never actually seen that before. Like, seriously, I've never seen in any game someone actually type out, I concede. It's always just GG. So, now I kind of have respect for that. Like, you actually took the time to type that all out. Or possibly create a macro in sometime in the past and then use that instead of typing it all out. But either way, it's more than most people go for. So, an interesting choice. Anyhow, that was that. I think we're going to... Oh, that was actually the first map around first match around four. So that puts Fieldthaws in a fairly strong position. That gives him three points. I mean that's on par with Google Frog, but if Google Frog wins the next match, that still puts Google Frog at top seed. Oh, <laughs> Captain Close just realizing I guess that What are they realizing exactly? Fieldhouse's commander was there? Like, they still had their commander. Or no, they didn't. Never mind. Their commander was blown. Actually, I can't tell anymore because they just... They left and I didn't check. Well, at any rate, that is that. I mean... Sounds like Captain Klutz regretted resigning as soon as they did. I mean, I don't think they had much of a chance, so I'm not going to say, oh, they should have kept going. I mean, I often do because tournaments are tournaments and you never really want to have it be too too much of a concession fest. If you concede too quickly, you just end up putting yourself in a terrible position. But anyway, that... That might have been early. I don't think it was that early. I think I think once the economy was really going into Field Toss's favor, there wasn't much hope. So, at this point, I'm... Yeah, I'm waiting until round five. I mean, we have... Captain Cuts and Fail Thoughts. We have Dime Friend, Magman. Both of those are done. Guy up and Ikens done. Guy up winning against Ikens. Not a huge surprise there. Although a bit of a surprise. Ikens is still fairly strong. So right now, it looks like Dime Friend, Google Frog, Guy up, and. Mm, not sure about Lamadeus or Fail Thoughts. But Dime Friend, Google Frog, and Guy up are going to be almost definitely advancing. I mean, there's still another round left, but. There's not much more to be said. I mean, this is... This is a position... Actually, and Field Thoughts as well. This is a strong position that they can work from. Lamadeus... Actually, it's hard to say, because Google Frog and Lamadeus, they haven't finished their game yet. If Lamadeus wins, we could actually still see Lamadeus and Google Frog together. Like, it's third place score, so if a bunch of people are tied for the same number of points, then we could actually see five or six people in the single limb bracket, depending on how that works. Actually, no, I don't think we will. I think, mathematically speaking, it has to be at most three. Or maybe four. Anyway, we'll be back with that when round four wraps up, so stay tuned for that. It'll be just a few minutes. <laughs> 